canvas art. Will it DTF? Let's find out. Today I'm gonna to show you how to not only print any photo on canvas with DTF, but also how to use Photoshop to turn your photos into a painting channeling our inner Bob Ross. Ready to have some fun? The real challenge today is going to be how to attach the transfer to the canvas. I have a couple ideas we'll try in a bit, but first, the artwork. Before we jump into Photoshop, if there's something you've ever wondered, will it DTF? Comment below and we'll try it for you here. We've done everything from shoes to skateboards and we're excited to test the limits of DTF. Thanks to the impressive printing capabilities of DTF printers like our Mongoose 2, you can print photos without making any adjustments. It's as simple as drag and drop. But today, we're going to be making some fine art. So let's jump into Photoshop. We'll start by creating a new file. First thing I'm going to do is make sure my resolution is optimized for DTF. We want it to be 300 DPI, and we're working with a canvas that is 20 inches by 16 inches. However, there's a half inch wrap around the sides. So to make sure the image wraps the whole canvas, I'm going to set my size at 21 and a half inches by 17 and a half inches. Now go to File, Place Embedded, and select the photo we want to print and edit the size to fit. You can do some slight color and levels adjustments, and if you're wanting a standard photo, you can just export it from here. PNG or JPEG doesn't really matter, but for the sake of workflow, I'm going with PNG. Let's make one that looks like a painting. Place the file like before and resize it to fill. Then duplicate the layer with the shortcut Command J on a Mac or Control J on a PC. And we'll hide this layer for now. Select the bottom layer, go to Filter, Neural Filters. If you don't see this option, you'll need to update your version of Photoshop. We're going to use the incredibly powerful Style Transfer Filter. You can either use one of the defaults or you can load a custom image with the style you'd like to emulate. I've learned from experience that every photo you do this with is a little bit different. There are no magic numbers, so get creative and play with the style image and the sliders until it looks the way you'd like. Once you're close to what you want, click OK. We'll be able to go back in and adjust it later if we need to. Now, make that top layer visible again, and we're going to set the transparency type to overlay and adjust the opacity. I like to add this step as it adds some contrast and you can finesse the final result. If you wanna go back in and change the style filter settings, just double click on the neural filters in the layers panel on the side. Make your adjustments and click OK. Now that our art has been transformed, we can export it as a PNG like we mentioned before. Next, we're going to tackle how to get this digital image on a canvas using DTF. But before we head over to the printer, if you found this first portion of the video useful, hit that thumbs up button and let us know. Let's load our images into Cadley. I'm not overly concerned about white underbase, ink amounts, or choke, as the only edges are going to be wrapped around the canvas, and we're not looking for a soft hand feel. Then I'm gonna rip it, print it, and cure it. Now the tough part, getting the transfer onto the canvas. We're gonna try two different methods. The first one we're gonna try with our painting is pressing the canvas as it is, and then using a mini Cricut heat press to wrap the edges. Let's give that a try. Starting out, I did cut a piece of wood to go behind it so that it does have something hard to press against. I'm gonna swing my heat press out of the way. I am running at 290 degrees. And because this inside sheet of wood is a little bit thinner than the actual frame with the canvas, I am gonna use a pressing pillow to help kind of hold it up off and hopefully we'll get a nice even press. Our canvas is slightly larger than the press, so we're actually gonna do it in kind of pieces. So let's set the canvas there. Now we're gonna try to line this up and we're gonna do our best to center it, because again, we were gonna to wanna to wrap the edges, so we want some overhang. Make sure you adjust your either your pressure, or in this case, the height of the platen, otherwise we won't be able to get it to press down all the way, because it's set up for a shirt, not a canvas. There we go. And we wait for 20 seconds. Okay, and then we're gonna Turn it around so we can get the other part of the canvas. There we go. All right, let's pull that off and see how it looks. Now what you wanna do is you kinda of wanna look and make sure it's adhered kind of everywhere around that frame. And I noticed this corner up here doesn't look great, so I'm gonna use the mini Cricut heat press and I'm just gonna press it into that corner. Now you don't wanna move 
and press really hard at the same time. You kind of want to press down for a little bit and then kind of gently slide it over. I feel pretty good about that. So now we're going to work on wrapping the edges of the canvas. So first I'm going to tape this bottom edge down because I'm going to work on this top side first. We're just going to kind of fold the film over, hold it in place, and then use the mini Cricut heat press to press the sides. I'm not sure entirely how well this is going to work, but that's why we do Willa DTF, to find out if our ideas actually work. We do have a little bit of extra, so I'm going all the way over the edge. I'll try to turn here so you guys can see better. I'm kind of just wrapping all the way around the edge. And because we are using our V2 hot peel, I can kind of see when the image starts to release from the film. So then I know I've probably got pretty good adhesion to the canvas. And instead of sliding, I'm kind of just like rolling it over the edge. I'm not actually sliding the heat press because I just want to get a nice, good contact with that kind of that rolled over edge. Now these corners are where it's going to get a little tricky, I think, because we've got kind of folded over canvas on there. And again, on the back and the sides, if you stretch or kind of, I don't know, screw up the, the film a little bit, it's not the end of the world because it's the edge of the canvas and a lot of canvas edges are stretched. And it looks like it is releasing, but I still got this spot here. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut my film right here and then wrap this side over it. So let me go grab a pair of scissors real quick. Hopefully I have a pair of scissors over here. <laughs> Apparently I don't have a pair of scissors. Go and pause the recording for a second. I'm gonna go grab a pair of scissors. So like I mentioned, we're gonna cut the film right here at the edge of the canvas to make it easier to wrap the other side. So I'm gonna be careful not to cut too far. And then same thing over here. Looks like that corner's not quite adhered. So let me get that to stick. And then, oh yeah, that's working really good. It's coming off. Ooh. So this side wasn't quite stuck enough. It kind of started to pull up again. We're just seeing if this works. It looks like it's working so far. All right, and we'll try this other side and then we'll work on the ends. I like a do the cha-cha. So this bottom side wrapped a little bit more than the top side. So I'm having to work around the staples a little bit, which is being a little bit difficult, but you just want to make sure you're getting that good adhesion to the canvas itself. Perfect. Awesome, we got that top edge. So that came off real nice. All right, now for these ends, I think I'm gonna cut this at an angle here, 45 degree, and the same thing on this side. And that should make it a little bit easier to wrap. You know what, I changed my mind. As opposed to wrapping this 45, I'm gonna cut it straight again because I have the DTF transfer going all the way up to this corner, so I don't need this full 45 over the edge. So I'm gonna just cut it straight. That should make it easier to work with. I think I'm good. The areas you need to really look out for are these edges, the corners and stuff like that, because they're gonna be the hardest to get wrapped. And it's also the spot you're gonna start pulling first. So you might need to help it along a little bit sometimes. So I'm having a little trouble with the edges adhering, so I'm boosting my temperature on the Mini Cricut up one more notch. We'll see if that helps. Okay, I think I've got all four sides on. 
It's a top god good adhesion. Ooh, it is coming. So I wonder if you can peeling off quite nicely. And one of the things is after you've pressed the film, it kind of gets crinkly. It's not, it's a little stiff. It's not as easy to maneuver once it's cooled off a bit. But so just be careful of it kinking and getting stuck on something. There was a spot that was not adhered as good. Gonna use a little parchment paper to finish off a couple spots that I didn't love the way they looked when they came off. Just get around all these edges and real gently across the middle. Okay, I'll show you the final result in a second. So the other way I'm trying is we're gonna remove the canvas from its frame and try to press it on the canvas by itself and then we're gonna restretch it on the frame. So the first thing we'll have to do is remove the staples and the easiest way to do that is to kind of go under the canvas with a sharp blade, maybe a knife or something like that and pry it up that way. Be careful not to tear the canvas. All right, we got all the staples out. Let's unwrap our frame. I think what I'm gonna do to make the press go a little smoother is I'm going to kind of pre-press it to flatten out some of these edges. Make sure you got the seams kind of the corners pulled apart. Should kind of look like that on the corners. And then for my heat press, I'm gonna to have to raise this up. We're not dealing with the thickness of the canvas frame. There we go. We're just gonna do that for a couple seconds to help flatten it out, to hopefully make it a little easier to press the actual film on it. There we go. Uh, definitely the heat makes the canvas a lot more pliable for sure. And with a lot of the canvases being a primed canvas, you may want to use some kind of protection for the heat press. Uh, ours already has a protective layer on it, so we're not going directly to a metal heating element. There we go, that looks pretty good. I'm gonna try to line this up as best I can. Looks good. And then this is a little bit bigger than our heat press, so we're gonna do it in two presses. And if the edge of your print is kind of going over the edge of the canvas right there, just to protect your heat press, put a piece of parchment paper down just so that the uh, DTF transfer doesn't try to stick to the heat press. And first press. Then we're gonna slide it over. But don't worry about some of this part being pressed a second time. It shouldn't affect it negatively. All right, let's slide this down here. Lay it flat for a second. Now we may struggle starting the peel because our corner is here off the canvas. So you'll notice it peels a little bit and then the part that didn't get stuck to the canvas kind of stays back. We're just gonna get that corner started. And now pull across just like you're doing any other transfer. That looks pretty good. Definitely not feeling any texture from the canvas, so I'm actually gonna up my pressure a little bit, so I'm gonna raise my bottom platen here. So we're gonna do just a few seconds at a higher pressure. And again, because the canvas gets really, really soft and pliable when it is warm, I wanna make sure I'm laying it flat immediately so it doesn't get any weird curves in it. That feels a lot better. Now it's time to rewrap it. And my advice when rewrapping is to not put the staples in the same place. Pick a slightly different spot to put your staple in. Okay. Take your canvas and pull this way while pushing the frame back toward yourself. That way we know we've got it wrapped well. Tack that first one in and then we'll do the same thing. Pull that edge to make that stretch in the canvas. All right, and on these corners, there's gonna be some folding involved. So let's first pull this side over and see how we're gonna look in the corner here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna fold this in and then we're gonna fold it over. But we're gonna start in the center, 
pull it pretty tight. Instead of going all the way across, I actually want to bring this other side over and just make sure the center of our canvas is nice and tight. And again, we will just make sure we're staying tight. So. Okay, I'll do these corners, tuck it in and fold it over. And then I'm also gonna staple just inside of it to make sure we keep a nice clean look on it. So, canvas art. Will it DTF? <laughs> Absolutely it does. Uh, it looks fantastic. Of the two methods I tried, removing the canvas from the frame and then reattaching it was definitely the easiest. You got a lot more even kind of pressing over everything. This worked totally fine, but definitely there's some edges that I'm not really pleased with. I would remove it from the frame, press it on the canvas, put the canvas back on. But either way, DTF adheres great to canvas. Uh, it is definitely a good option. I would also advise that if you're gonna try this method where you use the mini Cricut heat press to wrap the edges, that you use a canvas smaller than your heat press. As I mentioned before, if you've ever wondered, will it DTF? Put that in the comments below and we'd love to try your ideas and think outside the press with DTF. Oh, that'd make a cool t-shirt. Anyway, we'll see you guys in the next one.